All right, I think we sh can get started. Good morning, welcome everybody. I really thank you all for being here. I know Parker is on the big stage, so I really appreciate you guys are coming to me. And uh, I'll promise I'll make it worth your while. So uh, in the next 40 minutes, uh, I would like to uh, talk to you about uh, IoT and specifically about the, the role that Salesforce is playing in IoT, in uh, IoT strategy. Um, we understand there is a very vast landscape of IoT, IoT vendors out there, very solving all kinds of problems. Now I want to zoom in on what sorts of problems uh, Salesforce IoT can help you solve. My name is Holger. I am a product manager with the Salesforce IoT product. I do work out of Europe, so I interact a lot with the uh, European industry um, uh, customers that we have, industrial companies. And so a number of things that, that I'm showing you here are based on customer interactions that, I, that I'm doing over there uh, in Europe. Um, yeah, brief uh, legal disclaimer, you know it. Um, please only make your purchasing decisions uh, on things that have been publicly announced and are available, um, not on statements that I may make uh, during this presentation. Here's the uh, agenda that we're gonna have for, for our talk today. So three chapters. In the first chapter, I'm going to um, talk about um, the value that customers are expecting of an IoT solution and the investments that uh, businesses have to make in order to, to build that, in, that value for the customer. And then talk to you about something we call the four pillars of every IoT strategy. And then in the second chapter, I'm going to zoom in on where Salesforce sits in these four pillars and uh, give you some real examples on, on how to drive this uh, from a connected device all the way to a customer engagement journey. And last but not least, I would like to close it out with a customer story that we have built um, with a ferry operator out in, in Spain. And they are using connected ferries uh, and Salesforce IoT to monitor their entire operation and I would like to you know, show you how that works in, in detail. All right, so let's jump into uh, chapter one and have a discussion on uh, value versus investment. What I'm showing here is something you could consider like the Maslow uh, pyramid of, of IoT. At, at the very bottom, um, you satisfy the basic needs of businesses uh, working with connected devices Whereas at the very top, uh, you're getting uh, the most um, value for your customer out of your, your IoT strategy. And of course, that's, that's a journey. Uh, different customers are at different points in this journey. So let's, let's kind of walk through that uh, top to bottom here together. Um, at the very bottom, um, what customers do is they typically just um, focus on their, on their devices and uh, on the signals that these devices are sending. And they're collecting all these signals, they're analyzing them, and they basically want to understand the state of a device and make sure that when a device is broken, they do something, they go fix it. And this, in the simplest case, can, can be a reactive um, uh, thing. In the best case, it can be pro proactive. They fix the device before it, before it actually breaks. Now, as an analogy here, think of your like, engine light in your car. How else would you know that your engine has a problem unless there was a little indicator telling you you need to go fix it. Um, turns out there's a lot of investment required in, in just the base infrastructure to get to something seemingly simple, as simple as an engine light in the car. When businesses have mastered that level, they're in the next level um, looking to optimize their operations using connected devices and all the signal they're getting from these devices. Basically, minimize Input, maximize output. As another analogy here, um, think of the start-stop control uh, function in your car. Yeah, when, you're, when your car is at a traffic light, sitting idle, um, you could shut down the engine, therefore save gasoline. However, how do you know the car is idle? Well, you only know that because you get a signal from the engine that tells you it's idle. Um, you're already uh, seeing here that this provides higher value to your customer and at relatively lower uh, infrastructure investments. Yeah, once you got that engine light figured out, you can probably figure out the start-stop control uh, fairly quickly next. 
At the next level, um, customers are typically looking to improve their product line. They're typically looking to come up with the next best product um, that would you know, serve the needs of their customers better. And, and the way they can, they can understand what the next best product should be is, well, by understanding you know, the current products and the signals they're getting from these products, but also start to really understand the customer usage patterns. So it becomes obvious now that you're, you're looking at customer data uh, a lot more at, at these higher levels in the pyramid um, and, and put them in relation, correlate them with the um, data that you're getting off your devices. So now your business is really starting to look into um, what the customer wants, what the customer needs, and how you can you know, serve his needs. Ultimately, only a business that serves the customer is going to, to succeed, right? And then an level up even, um, businesses are interested to, to sell more, yeah, upsell and cross-sell opportunities, and they're gonna come um, only when they put the, the customer at the center of um, their, their IoT strategy. So only when they really understand what have they previously sold to customers, how are customers using, how are customers adopting, and, and where can you, you know, uh, come in with, an, with a, a product um, version, a product iteration, or an upsell of an existing product. Um, all that is possible now if you focus on, on the customer data, and, and what better platform to use than Salesforce, which is the number one customer relationship management you know, cloud out there. So use that data that you have in Salesforce and also consider that data that's coming out of your physical um, devices, your connected devices. And last, and that's really what, what we're seeing is the, the latest trend in, in IoT, there's completely new business models emerging. For example, we're working with a robot manufacturer in, in Germany. They are selling, traditionally, they're selling robots to car manufacturers, right? But turns out car manufacturers don't necessarily want to own robots. Yeah, BMW, Audi, Daimler, they don't care about the thousands of robots they have in their assembly line and the fact that these robots are all well-tuned and working nicely and all that. What they care about is the output of their assembly line and the guarantees that the robot manufacturer could make them that the, that assembly line will never come to a standstill. There will never be a problem with their assembly line. So we're, what, what the robot manufacturer now does is they're inventing business models in which they're selling capacity or pay-per-use subscriptions to the car manufacturer without actually selling them physical devices. And BMW doesn't want to own robots. BMW wants to build cars, and they want to make sure that at the end of the day, their assembly line produces as many cars as, as they need. So if we have now understood these are journeys, customers are in different um, you know, uh, levels of maturity. Um, what's in common, so for every of these customers and every of these uh, implementations is this sort of landscape. On the very left hand side, you have things that are emitting data signals, turns out, not all of the things out in the world emit data already. And, and there are actually a number of vendors in this space just focusing on you know, making devices connected. We're working, for example, with one vendor who puts as many as 10 sensors into vending machines. And, and these sensors help them understand if that vending machine is being shaken because someone's trying to get a drink out of it and you know, didn't pay for it, or if that vending machine uh, has an open door uh, because it's currently being, you know, refilled or restocked or um, uh, serviced. Also, they, they put uh, weight sensors on the individual trays and use that to monitor um, basically the stock level on the tray and then initiate restocking if that stock level is going low. So those are um, certainly important and uh, interesting businesses, but not something that, you know, Salesforce is concerned with. So we don't connect devices. Then there's always um, what's called an IoT platform. And that IoT platform um, is a very important piece of infrastructure because that platform not only receives signal from all these devices, they also have to you know, manage these devices. They have to take care of connectivity. They have sometimes data rules and, and drive process. They can even have very complex machine learning based you know, analytics built in. And it turns out there are very hard security and also scalability requirements on these platform vendors. Um, 
if you if you remember an example where a Tesla, for example, was able to remotely extend the range of their Model S fleet uh, during Hurricane Irma uh, so that people could get out of the hurricane zone without having to recharge. Now, that was driven you know, purely by a, an IoT platform connecting directly to the Tesla without ever you know, physically touching it. Now, just imagine someone was going into that communication for you know, malicious purposes, and so you can definitely, you know, um, affect physical devices if you were to, you know, intercept that, that traffic. So very hard requirements, lots of vendors focusing in the space, very successful big companies. Salesforce is not in that space and Salesforce will never, never be in that space. That's domain knowledge we don't have and, and we don't need. Yeah? But what does Salesforce offer you? Well, Salesforce offers you customer engagement because we own the customer. We own customer data through sales, through service, through marketing. Through a lot of you know, existing um, clouds that we already have, we own so much customer data that it only makes sense now to enrich the customer experience, the customer engagement, with data coming off the uh, IoT platform. And then uh, that, what that allows you to do is build up an, a lot of new um, solutions, journeys we'll look into uh, in detail here, um, because you bring the device data in with the customer data at Salesforce. All right, um, I've already hinted at this. There are a number of players uh, in the IoT platform sector. Um, we're going to group and analyze them in a, in a second. Um, but one thing that always comes up, the question is, well, why would I not just uh, query the Salesforce data and you know, join it with the uh, device data, but do it at the IoT platform level? Well, that's certainly a viable solution. But um, I've got to uh, warn you that first, um, an IoT platform is not a customer engagement platform like Salesforce. And secondly, customer data uh, changes, right? So there's a lot to be said about lifecycle management for customer data. Device data, on the other hand, that's immutable. Once the device has sent a signal, has sent an event, that's never going to change. That event is passed. So what we're proposing, and that's what we've built here, is um, a gateway for Salesforce to bring the device data in from the IoT platform, so to join it with the customer data in Salesforce. And that's exactly where the Salesforce IoT product sits. All right, let's talk a little bit more about uh, IoT platform vendors. Um, so working uh, in the space now, um, we come to understand there is kind of two um, ends of a vertical here. There's the, the industrial, the businesses, and then there's the consumer-facing uh, companies. And so in the industrial vertical, the robotics or logistics, retail, financial customers, they have one thing in common. Um, they all always um, operate very expensive piece of equipment. Yeah, this could be as big as ferries. And, and so you, you need to you know, have an IoT strategy that allow you to, to manage that expensive piece of equipment. And so it's, you know, um, a lot of very complex events being emitted somewhat infrequently, not necessarily even that, that all that often. You, you know your customers pretty well. You have rich customer context. It's all, you know, hopefully represented in Salesforce. And you need to have a lot of domain knowledge in order to do something uh, with the data in, in this vertical. And there are uh, literally hundreds of platform vendors out there that provide this domain knowledge, uh, namely Siemens, uh, with their MindSphere suite, or Bosch with their IoT hub, or even GE with Predix and Cisco and PDC ThingWorks. And so we partner with a large number of these you know, industry uh, platforms. And yes, our product, our solution is able to uh, accept data coming off these platforms. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have your you know, B2C customers. And those are typically uh, fairly you know, cheap hair uh, devices. These are wearables, these are appliances, could also be connected cars or smart homes, you know, thermostats and Fitbits and smart cameras and what have you today, um, all emitting signal, all uh, connected devices. Their event structure is much simpler. They're, however, sending very many events, yeah, frequently, high velocity, high volume. Um, we don't necessarily have as much cost customer context on these consumers. Yeah? Sometimes the business isn't actually directly selling to these 
uh, consumers, often they're using partners and resellers. And so customer context somewhat gets lost here. And, and what we also know is that uh, there are a lot of homegrown uh, developments happening in that platform space where every single business builds their own platform, very purpose specific and leveraging mostly, you know, um, general purpose uh, platform as service like the AWS or the Google Cloud platform or the Microsoft Azure platform. And well, the good news is we can also connect up with these platforms and consume data uh, from these you know, businesses uh, at scale. Now let's uh, have one more look at the, the, the types of journeys that these customers are trying to build. Um, and there are different journeys. If, if these are businesses and in industrial uh, players, on the B2B side, they're most often asking for a service journey. They're most often asking that we automate the process of um, you know, opening up service cases, sending out field service technicians, maybe do this proactively before the device actually breaks. Um, in the middle there, these players that have uh, partners in between you know, their, themselves and their consumers, um, there's always a need for like community cloud integration. They're looking to you know, show their entire uh, set of products, those that they have sold directly, but also the ones that partners have sold, understand the state of all their products out there in the field, understand it by geography or by, by customer segment, and, and make all that available in dashboards and community cloud and allow you know, their partners to access the community cloud and get the same view or a, a limited view. So um, these are typically the types of solutions that we're building with the B2, B2C uh, customers. And then on the right-hand side, the B2C customers, um, they are also, you know, most likely uh, asking us, well, can we drive marketing journeys through uh, Salesforce IoT? Yeah? Can, we, can we drive adoption journeys? Or can we drive uh, upsell and cross-sell journeys through uh, IoT? Or you know, directly connect with Sales Cloud uh, to create opportunities. So that's, um, that's the landscape that, that we see and that we have observed over now a, f a few years working in this space. Now let's talk about how Salesforce IoT fits that landscape. Um, first, I've, I've mentioned that, that we have this gateway um, between you know, the IoT platform and the Salesforce CRM, and that gateway is represented through a product, and that product is called IoT Explorer. We've launched IoT Explorer uh, at Dreamforce last year, or shortly before Dreamforce, and we've built IoT Explorer uh, with three uh, things in mind, three principles uh, that you'll find are in this um, product. The first one is, well, Salesforce is about customer engagement, be it through you know, sales cloud, marketing cloud, service cloud, community cloud, so customer engagement was the first principle that we want to allow you as a business to connect with your customers using the additional data that you're getting out of your device infrastructure, your IT platform, and the data that, that you own and have in Salesforce. Um, the second principle is, well, customer context is key. So if, if you're a, a business who's merely working at the low level there uh, with connected devices in, in the pyramid, and you don't really own your customer, you don't have customer context yet in Salesforce, or you don't you know, represent anything of your customer in Salesforce, well, then it's very you know, difficult for you to build a customer journey or you know, uh, tackle customer engagement. So customer context is key, and what this product is allowing you to do is merge the customer context with the machine data that's coming off your IoT platform. And, and another principle is, um, IoT solutions are hardly ever set in stone. In fact, they're very uh, agile, and we wanted to build a product that allows you to adjust to change in market or change in product or change in uh, industry, um, be able to do that, and, and therefore we followed this you know, low-code, no-code paradigm, giving a UI a lot of administrative and point-and-click type of uh, actions in this UI so that you don't have to go do code and then you know, recode uh, when, when things change. So rapid innovation is the third principle here. All right, and so now let's uh, talk a little more about the uh, Salesforce IoT Explorer. This here is um, the architecture of the product. So um, data coming in through what's called platform events, 
um, there are RESTful APIs that allow you to emit platform events. Then um, you find uh, something called a context. The context is where you join your customer relationship data, your CRM data, with the platform event data coming in and basically build a 360-degree view of your customers and their devices. So now you've you know, had exactly joined the customer with the devices you own. Then that gets forwarded into what we call a state machine. A state machine for us is a model, a graph, in which we can represent um, the business logic that you want to execute in order to drive your you know, customer engagement journey. Um, what's important here is, well, it's a declarative rules engine, but it's also a state machine. So it remembers uh, what state your devices is in. This is not a fire and forget. This is remember what was the last event that I've received for the device and wait until I receive the next event and then you know, transition state if, if necessary. And on the output side of things, well, you can, you can drive action in Salesforce into any of our existing clouds, or you can also drive action outside of Salesforce and call third-party APIs, doing that again through the platform event uh, infrastructure. Um, let's talk uh, well, a little bit uh, detail about each of these individual um, uh, parts um, and give you an example along the way while we're talking about it. Um, one thing to note is that everything that you're defining in, in uh, IoT Explorer uh, is metadata, uh, can be packaged up, can be exported, can be re-imported, um, so you can work across orgs um, and have a you know, proper um, lifecycle management strategy. All right, so platform events, um, you define them in the platform. This uh, event, you know, this uh, platform event mechanism has been made available uh, sometime earlier last year. And uh, there is a REST API. Uh, your external um, clients can authenticate with the API using standard Salesforce OAuth 2 authentication. And then emit these events as JSON payloads. And here is one of those um, definitions of a platform event. This here is from a... Uh, a, a business in, in Europe uh, building cool uh, pool cleaning uh, devices. So those that you know, clean your pool automatically. And so what, what they capture, a simplified you know, payload here, they just uh, give their API a name. It's the, the Dolphin um, uh, devices. Um, they capture an ID for every single device. Uh, that ID is important. That's the unique key you've got to carry with every um, incoming platform event and then the state of the device, and then maybe they also capture how many cleaning cycles that pool cleaner has done since its last reset. Yeah, so very simple use case. We're gonna follow through in the next few slides here. So then after we, we have defined these platform events, um, we need to define the context. So context here, as I said, joins a Salesforce object that could be of type asset, um, for example, and join that Salesforce object with the incoming device data using that primary key. You can also you know, join with a number of different Salesforce objects, and you can create as many of these contexts as you want over the same input stream, or you can also have different input streams, so you could have multiple platform event definitions all you know, coming together in your, ultimately in your orchestrations. So here's what a simple, very simple context looks like. Left-hand side is the event data coming off the pool cleaner. And right-hand side is the asset definition sitting in Salesforce, and we join them on the identifier. Then the uh, state machine itself, the orchestration, um, as I said, this is the uh, rules engine, so it's a declarative uh, rules um, a model uh, where you have conditions and you have actions and you also have state transitions. You can save things in variables and then you drive output, and the output goes towards you know, Salesforce or uh, external uh, APIs. So simple, uh, very simple state graph for our dolphin pool cleaner. It can be in any of the three states. It can be idle. Uh, it can be in a state where it's currently cleaning the pool, or we're saying it could also be in a state where it requests service, and uh, now you, know, you can be in any one of these three states. Here's a rule um, behind this uh, state model, and, and the rule, you, the way you read this is on the left-hand side, the event comes in, the Dolphin platform event, then there is your condition, if the state that we get off the platform event says, you know, requires service, then do something, in this case, we're gonna create a service case, 
and we're going to transition into the next state, which is called in-service. All right, now how do we get the data into Salesforce? Um, we've, we've now talked about Salesforce IoT there in the middle, so we know exactly what the, the context and the orchestrations are uh, supposed to do, and on the output side, that we're creating service cases. Now let's talk briefly about the integration with the IoT platform. Uh, we've mentioned the IoT platform is a, is a, is a very you know, sophisticated um, piece of infrastructure, can do a lot of things like connectivity, have its own data rules, can have its own registry of devices, can pr uh, uh, you know, pr pr present something called a digital twin, and uh, a lot of other functions. Now, in this case, for the pool cleaner, we've had to work with AWS as the IoT platform um, vendor. And in AWS, you have a service called IoT Gateway. That's where all the you know, data comes off the physical device, gets captured in, in topics, and then you can do storage of these uh, events, you can do computation, analytics, or you could also emit them uh, into Salesforce using uh, a function here, Lambda in this case. Lambda is their uh, development uh, environment. So before you can do that, however, in Salesforce, you have to um, uh, you know, tell um, the platform um, that AWS is a trusted third party and basically grant uh, connectivity between the AWS service and the Salesforce API. So this is business as usual. You're registering AWS IT Hub as a connected app. Now in AWS, this is how you would do it. Um, so in AWS, every thing, every device is identified through a unique identifier. And, and now you're querying um, the data coming off these uh, devices, and then you're calling a function to pass on the data directly to Salesforce IoT. Here it's just a snippet, a uh, very simple function, in fact, just a simple mapping of the data in AWS over to the data in Salesforce. Don't have to go into detail of this. Um, let's just see the outcome of it now. So um, in AWS, uh, upper right-hand corner, uh, we have received an event that was published to the topic there. Uh, we now have the whole infrastructure in place to forward that event. The orchestration has picked up the event, has done the work to create a service case. Service case is down at the bottom on the right-hand side. And it has also transitioned um, our, our state graph into the new state in service. So this is literally how, how it works all the time, regardless of what the platform is, the IoT platform, this sort of integration uh, is what, what customers are building. All right, last not least, let's look at a very uh, complete and very nice um, solution that we've uh, built with a customer in, in Spain, um, actually through a partner also out of Spain. The customer here is, um, yeah, it's Trust Mediterranea. I don't speak Spanish, it's a very hard word. Um, I'm not even gonna try to. Um, so anyway, there's a ferry operator in Spain that has a, 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 a fleet of uh, vessels. They have 22 vessels. They transport two and a half million passengers every year, uh, but they also transport cargo. And they do this between the ports of mainland Spain, Balearic Islands, and then the north, north of Africa. And so what they wanted to build is a, a fleet operations control center. Um, they basically <coughs> do this um, you know, with that platinum partner in Spain called Lead Click, and they had a few uh, guiding principles uh, for that operations um, control center. Um, first one is they wanted to engage more directly with their customers. In this case, these are their passengers. Um, for example, if, if they can automatically learn that a ferry is late to arrive, they can notify the passengers waiting an, at the port and, and basically send them an SMS telling them, your ferry is about two hours late, don't bother waiting here monitoring you know, our, our screens at the port, you could go off to town, have dinner, and still be back in time to catch your ride. Um, then they also find there are sales opportunities in these solutions. Um, they can't only monitor their own fleet, they can actually monitor their competitor's fleet. And they can do some upselling and cross-selling of tickets. When they realize that a you know, passenger is waiting on a, on a ferry that is late to arrive, they could, if they operate the same route, they could upsell tickets at discounts. 
Um, another goal they had in mind was cost savings um, through operations management. So um, they're going to monitor all these 22 ferries while they're out at sea um, to, to, to monitor for fuel consumption, monitor for engine <coughs> um, uh, you know, power out, output and intake, and um, even monitor the weather patterns uh, to, to control the ferry routes. And yeah, it turns out that their captain is actually equipped with um, a Salesforce mobile app, so they can directly engage and alert the captain on, on, on things. Yeah, and last and um, definitely not least is uh, safety and security. So they now capture their manifesto, their entire you know list of passengers for every journey. They capture that in Salesforce, and you know in including uh, contact details for um, emergency contacts. And should there ever be a stalled ferry out at sea, well, you can't just pick up your cell phone and call your family. Turns out there's no cell phone signal out at sea. So with that solution, they can do the engagement with your contacts for you. They tell them that ferry has a problem. You are expected late at the port. Don't worry, we're sending someone out there to fix it. So those kinds of journeys are possible now um, using the data directly off the, the ferry. And so how does the data get um, you know, into Salesforce and how do we drive all this? Um, turns out that every uh, marine um, vehicle out there has or is equipped with a beacon um, sender and and there is a uh, you know a standard format for a marine traffic system where these beacon signals get sent into an automated um, information system they have to include a payload and like timestamp latitude longitude or but also course over ground and and the expected time of arrival and the the uh, the, the port they're heading into so all that data is in fact publicly available so all that the partner had to do is basically build a, a consumer in Salesforce IoT using a bit of Apex um, to query this publicly available data, get the real-time status of all their ferries. And then they use that to drive you know, the business actions through IoT and represent the outputs in uh, a lightning app called the Operations Control Center. They're also sending uh, SMS out to their customers and uh, last thing we had to do here, just for demo purposes, is build a little simulator so we can intercept that live traffic that's actually flowing and that's actually coming off the boats and pretend that one of the ferries has a problem. All right, so without further ado, let's uh, run a little demo here. And um, what the first view that we're looking at here is a status uh, panel view. Here they're representing their entire fleet, all 22 ferries uh, and their current you know, state, where the you know, uh, port of origin was, the destination port, what's their elapsed time of or expected time of arrival, are they currently you know, on route or are they sitting at the port, and what other e events are we getting um, directly out of you know, Salesforce IoT, those are represented down there. And if there were any alerts, mechanical problems, or delays or something, we can represent those as a different type of event and call this an alarm and, and represent it here. So um, using this um, status panel now, here is uh, how it looks in the back end with uh, the uh, state machine. The state graph basically now tells us that all their ferries, in this case it's 16 at the moment, are in a normally operating state. There's not a single one that has a technical problem, not a single one that is stopped out at sea. So we're, we're in a mode where everything is happy and healthy and we're not generating any alerts. Now let's actually change that and use our little simulator. With that simulator, we're gonna emit an alert. Uh, in this case, we're using a navigation status that is actually a standard uh, value accepted out there in the marine uh, industry. And that navigation status six now indicates a problem we're sending that status for one of uh, one of the ferries and pretending it has um, you know a navigational issue and then going back into the orchestration we see now immediately a state change for one of the ferries it is now in a state of having a technical problem so we're emitting an alert and we're acting on this problem first thing we're doing is we're creating the service case uh, very similar to what you've seen before um, but here in the service case we already have a lot of uh, context now we know which ferry uh, in question we we know that you know the the IOT automated process has created the service case it wasn't a, a person phoning in 
We know what the problem is. It's a navigational status problem. We know who the captain is because all that is context. We even know how to contact the captain. We know how to contact you know, the, uh, the operations center for that matter. So that's one of the uh, use cases we've built with them. Another one is this like map view of, of their fleet. So they wanted to you know, monitor all their 22 vessels and that's all life and well if, if you're sitting there in your office but um, what would be possible if, if your passengers are waiting there in Barcelona at the port and they're waiting on the arrival of one of the ferries? How can you actually engage with your waiting customers if you know the status of your ferry and that, you know, whether the, or not the, the ferry is late or is, is, is on time? So here I'm pretending to be one of those passengers. I have my phone with me uh, and I am also, you know, uh, sitting at the port. And now we're emitting an event saying that the ferry was expected to arrive at 10 o'clock. However, now it's already 12 o'clock. So we're, again, using an orchestration to now emit an SMS and send it out to the list of customers um, that qualify for SMS notifications. So I'm one of those customers. And uh, in due time, I'll see my message pop up on the phone. So there it is, uh, Trans Mediterranean customer support. There is this information, the ship that you're waiting on is delayed two hours and uh, 16, and now you can go check terminals or do some other journey with them, point them at a website, do something like that. And here, um, this is another orchestration working exactly over the same platform event stream, just you know serving a different purpose now. Here the purpose is to alert customers on late arrivals, whereas the other orchestration had the purpose of, uh, you know, alerting um, staff if there's a, a service issue. And last not least, we are also able to monitor uh, telemetry data uh, coming off the the engines of the events in order to to you know compute KPI charts. How are uh, your different uh, ferries? How are, is every single vessel doing over time? And yes, we can we can send header feeds to the captain because the captain is equipped with Salesforce IoT. Uh, with Salesforce, and we can tell them, look, we're observing that you're currently driving above, you know, the recommended speed. You're at 35 knots. Optimal speed would be 25 knots. Um, we can, you know, basically <laughs> monitor the performance of our captains that way. So that solution is is working in production out there. Um, this is not just a fictitious story that we're uh, that we're telling here. This is an actual uh, customer story. All right, and so to um, close it out, uh, I just wanted to point you at a few additional resources that uh, that you now have to, to learn more about Salesforce IoT. We have an expo out there in the uh, IoT village. If you haven't seen it yet, it's a Lego city, a very nice little um, display of uh, use cases. We have trails. Um, one of the trails is actually a very nice hands-on trail uh, using a physical device called the Electric Imp. You can buy this for $20 off Amazon. And then you can start emitting signal of the Electric Imp and processing it at Salesforce IoT and see the art of the possible there. And then last is the uh, IP API guidelines. So of course, we have user documentation on the product. But you can also programmatically integrate the products in your um, strategy and, and do this through API. All right, well, with that, I would love to uh, open it up for questions. Uh, if there are any, please uh, you know, use the microphones or ask me after, after we're done. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm.